Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. We sincerely apologize for beginning a little bit behind time. Uh, but we're here now. We're going to make the best of the time that we've got. And we hope that you're going to enjoy your time with us. Uh, we, as one of our to hot topics, we're going to be looking at controversy over end bad governance protesters' age and court drama. And also, uh, the second hot topic will be on Nigerian workers in Libya facing arrest, deportation after CAF ruling. Also, you know that we're, as usual, going to have our top trending issues and then we'll go to the press to see uh, what the headlines are that made it to the front pages of some of our national dailies. Once again, good morning and welcome to the program. We're going straight away to the top trending issues uh, this morning. And the top trending issues begin with uh, uh, this story about um, uh, Lagos uh, local government planning to rename streets and name after, or that are named after non-indigents. Uh, this uh, local government is a Jeremy Fellowdon local government area in Lagos State. It is reportedly it has reportedly launched an initiative to rename streets that are currently named after non-indigent, sparking significant public debate and drawing attention to the cultural and ethnic dynamics within the city. The alleged move is said to be part of a broader effort to emphasize and celebrate the heritage of the local indigenous populations, ensuring that the cultural legacy of the air the area's original inhabitants is prominently reflected in public spaces. Supporters of the initiative argue that renaming the streets is an overdue step towards acknowledging and honoring the contributions of indigenous people in the development and identity of the area. They believe that the decision will help reinforce a sense of pride and cultural continuity, which is especially important in a rapidly urbanizing city like Lagos, where the influence of different ethnic groups is pronounced. However, the proposed changes have not been without controversy. Critics have raised concerns that the renaming initiative could exacerbate ethnic tensions in an already diverse and multicultural state. Lagos, known for being a melting pot of cultures and a place where various Nigerian ethnicities have coexisted and thrived, might see this as a divisive measure rather than a unifying one. Some worry that removing street names honoring notable non-indigenous or indigenous figures could be perceived as exclusionary and send a message of intolerance or disregard for the multicultural spirit that has long defined Lagos. Community leaders and residents are now closely monitoring the local government's plans, seeking clarity on the streets targeted for renaming and the criteria that will be used to determine the new names. Questions remain about the potential impact on businesses and residents who will have to adjust to new addresses and the logistical challenges involved in such a project. As the discussions continue, it is evident that the renaming initiative has opened a broader conversation about cultural preservation, inclusivity, and the evolving identity of Lagos State. Well, uh, not much can be said about uh, if their minds are set to doing this thing. Uh, but first of all, I, I think it is a bad idea. Um, the streets on the, on the, in themselves tell a story about what Lagos used to be and what it has become now. And to say that uh, there is nothing new that can be in that local government that can be named after indigenous is, uh, is a shame to me. Uh, because if they, the local government is evolving and it is developing, that means there are so many other things that can be named uh, after after the, the, the indigents of Lagos State, as it were. Changing the names doesn't mean that there's development coming. Changing the name doesn't mean uh, that uh, it has made the, 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 the local government more Lagos than it is. In fact, it will start with changing the names of uh, non-indigents uh, to, the, to the time when uh, the names may need to be changed again to the real Lagosians because we know that some of the names that might be written on these uh, streets uh, will be names of people who came from other states or other Yoruba states to come and make a name for themselves here in Lagos State. So there will come a time, if this is allowed, uh, that they will start to say, okay, you came from Ogun State and you became a governor in our state, so we are going to change this name to someone who is really a Lagos person. You came from uh, Abiokuta, you came from Ondo State, you came from uh, whatever kind of state, and you, be you made a name in Lagos State, so we are going to change this. I, I don't think that is a mark of development. As a person, I'm just saying it. And a second thing is that it will take a lot of time for, for these names to catch on. 
it will take a lot of time for this name to catch on because uh, this is what it is. For instance, if you're going, you're going to even here right now in Lagos that we didn't need to change, there's a name that a particular place is called when you're coming from Ojodobega to the island before the bridge, you get to a place everybody likes to call 7-Up. Uh, that place has a name, it, it, the bus stop has a name, and you can only find that when you're taking an e-hailing uh, cab, that name will appear, otherwise everybody knows it as something else. So what's the point in changing a name that may never be used, except maybe on official documents, but that's the end, and you send an official document to someone and he doesn't even know where that thing is, just because you want to show that this is Lagos. And the talk following that is that we want to show that Lagos is a Yoruba state, uh, in a little while, it will be want to show that Lagos is a, Lag is a Lagos man state and it's not every Yoruba that can become a Lagos person. I don't think that is development, but I'm talking as a person. If you want to honor your people, develop things that you can name after them. It's not because a road that was developed maybe in 1956 uh, that the administrator at that time was maybe one uh, Mr. Winterbottom and they named that, state, that street uh, um, with his name and then you are now coming to change it to show that it is a Lagos that belongs to Yorubas or Lagos that belongs to indigents and all that. It do doesn't show development at all. In fact, when you go outside this country, you go to the Western world, there are some, some communities that have declared full days, uh, maybe something like Davido Day, uh, uh, Whiskey Day and all that. Whiskey and Davido are Nigerians. Uh, Bonner Boy is a Nigerian but because they recognize what impact he has had in their communities, they name a day, they, they dedicate a day to them, not just naming a street, but just they dedicate a day to them. So are they wrong? Or does it make you proud that one of your own is uh, given a day somewhere outside Nigeria? And then you want to come and show that this is Lagos and all that. I'm not saying this because I'm not an, an I'm not an indigent. That's not what, what I'm saying. I, in my own state, I know that there was a move like that and a few states were named after indigent. Still date, nobody has ever used that, even in official documents, except it's the, the, um, the, the, the government that is writing. But any other document carries the old names. Nobody even knows those new names, even though they are boldly written on the signpost. So I think any place that is developing we should see so many innovations that will even overshadow those ones that were named after people who are non-indigenous. You have, you have football fields or, or stadia that you're, you're, you're building, you have schools that you're building, you have so many other things that you're building, name them uh, after your people. Build new roads, name them after your people, not changing the ones that are old. It's just like painting an, an old building that, uh, whose integrity is no longer there. I, I don't think that is development. But if you see that as development and showing everybody who has contributed to making your, uh, your, your local government what it is today, that they don't belong, well, I think I also buy the sentiments of those who think that this is divisive. But if you want to go ahead and do it, who am I to say no to it? Okay, the second one is that President Bola Tinubu has made a firm declaration that he will not uh, retract the tax reforms bill despite mounting pressures from various interest groups, addressing concerns raised by critics who, got, who argued that the new tax measures could place additional financial burdens on everyday Nigerians. Tinubu emphasized the necessity of the reforms for Nigeria's economic uh, stability and growth. According to the president, the bill is designed to streamline tax collection, widen the tax net, and reduce reliance on oil revenue, which has historically been volatile and unreliable. He acknowledged the grievances expressed by businesses and citizens, but stressed that the reforms are part of a broader economic strategy aimed at modernizing the country's fiscal policies and creating a more sustainable revenue base. Tinubu assured Nigerians that provisions have been made to minimize the negative impact on lower income households and promised that funds generated from the new tax measures would be used transparently to improve infrastructure, healthcare and education. The president's stand has sparked a mixed reaction across the nation. Supporters argue that the reforms are essential for building a resilient and diversified economy, while opponents fear that the changes could stifle economic activity and exacerbate financial hardship for already struggling citizens. As the bill advances in the legislative process, all eyes are on the government's next step. 
uh, with stakeholders urging continuous dialogue to address concerns and ensure a fair implementation of the tax reforms. Well, it, it's good for a president to take a firm stand. Uh, I, I give him that. But sometimes a firm stand can, can come out as arrogance. If Nigerians are complaining about a particular document, then the best thing to do is to say, okay, let me take a look at it again and I will reintroduce it to the National Assembly and then call a few uh, stakeholders, more, more stakeholders into the matter to see what, how you can convince them and then they have their own inputs into the bill that you're sending to the National Assembly, not just to put your foot down and say, no, you know what, whether you like it or not, I'm going to do this. That comes out as arrogance, and that should not be the stand of a president. Sometimes you may not need to even make any changes to the document, but you need to just give the people the benefit of the doubt that they know what they're complaining about and call them to the table and convince them. And then there will be your evangelists that will talk for you instead of just saying that I will never, never do this. If those things that the people are complaining about are real, not imagined, then how do you think the bill will work or the law will work in the implementation of this law? I think the, the, the president should, should listen more and involve more people. We keep complaining all the time that the president or the present administration makes a brings a policy before consulting uh, the stakeholders uh, that should have made their own contributions to that policy. And this is a very, very uh, wrong thing to do. Democracy is about the people. Consult them first. If they cry that you didn't consult them, at least tell them to give you some people that will be representative enough or convince them in words that are uh, that show that you, you are concerned about their own concerns. That's my take on that issue. Anyway, police arrest 130 Chinese Nigerians, uh, Chin Chinese and Nigerians for alleged cybercrime in FCT. In a significant crackdown on cybercrime activities, the police have arrested 130 individuals comprising both Chinese nationals and Nigerians in the federal capital territory FCT. The suspects were apprehended during a coordinated operation aimed at dismantling a major cybercrime network accused of conducting illegal online activities and defrauding unsuspecting victims. According to the police spokesperson, the Joint Tax Force acted on credible intelligence that led them to locations believed to be hubs for various forms of cyber fraud. It, items recovered from the suspects include laptops, smartphones, and sophisticated gadgets used for carrying out cyber crimes. Authorities emphasize their commitment to combating cybercrime and warned that perpetrators, regardless of their nationality, would face the full weight of the law. The arrests have sparked uh, discussions about the increasing prevalence of cyber-related offenses in Nigeria, prompting calls for stronger cybersecurity measures and public awareness campaigns. Meanwhile, investigations are ongoing to determine the extent of the network's operations and to identify any additional collaborations involved in their late cyber activities. A good one there for the police. I hope that at the end of the day, uh, the Chinese nationals will not be released and the Nigerians uh, detained for forever. Uh, we've seen what uh, uh, happened uh, with the Binance chief executive. We don't know why the, uh, the charges were dropped, but they say on health grounds he has been uh, released. And I was just thinking to myself, what if it were a Nigerian? Will, will they release him like that without saying anything anymore? Well, the president of America called and congratulated and thanked our own president. I'm sure that's an achievement. Uh, this administration will be ticking off their books that they achieved a phone call from the president of the United States. But if anybody commits a crime, let him face the full rot of the law, no matter where he comes from. In fact, our own senator is still languishing in the prisons of the UK because of something that maybe uh, he was not 100% aware was such a grievous crime. Uh, we, don't, we still don't know the details, but according to the laws of that land, he was supposed to go in for it. And he's still there in jail till date. I'm sure he also has his own health challenges, but he has not been released. So if this investigation, it is discovered that these people were involved in crime, treat them all equally or maybe even more the people who are not from here because if they came from their countries to come and um, teach our people how to do crime and, and destabilize our economy and every other thing, that sh theirs should be even more grievous than uh, the people back home. But I'm not saying that you should segregate. Everybody should face the full rot of the law. That is what it is. So thank you. Kudos to you, police. Uh, be very, 
vigilant also to capture the Boko Haram and other people who are perpetrating evil in our country and then will continue to clap for you. Uh, like the, 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 IG, AIG, the IG said when he came into power, he said he was going to be moving like a lion, you know. I don't know if he's still a lion now or he's something else, but we still uh, thank you for the small things that you have been doing to help uh, sanitize our society. We'll take a break now. When we return, we'll be looking at the papers. Don't go away.